Okay, Paul Salmon here. I'd like to talk to you about a, uh, I started a series of videos called uh, Mistakes I've Made in Aviation. And so this is, a, I've got another one that I think I ought to tell you guys about. And this occurred back in February 2017. It was in February, late February 2017. I kind of got a reputation for uh, willing to deliver gyros pretty much all over the United States. I mean, people have, they sell gyros. Somebody's in Missouri, sells one to someone in California. Usually I get the call to, hey, will you deliver this gyro for me? And I'm typically stupid enough to say yes, you know. So anyway, so I got a reputation for delivering a lot of gyros. And I've done this flight uh, coast to coast um, many times in gyro planes. So <clears throat> at this time I had a gyro plane that I was delivering from Missouri uh, to Las Vegas. And uh, for those of you that have never done a, a long cross country uh, between, say, the Midwest and Las Vegas or Southern California, Basically, when you run east to west, uh, you've got uh, a decision to make. You need to run, there's, uh, you know, I'll show you on a map here. When you run through uh, New Mexico here, uh, here's northern New Mexico, and see all these uh, uh, restricted areas here that are all along here. They rarely will ever give you permission to cross these restricted areas. So you either have to run north, basically up here along I-40 through Albuquerque in that way, or run down south here, uh, to El Paso and then eventually sort of following I-10 on out to California or up to Vegas, whichever way you're going. Okay, so again, did I mention it was February? <laughs> this is February and it's pretty cool. So it's an open cockpit gyroplane and uh, so you're going to have to fly this thing, open cockpit gyroplane in February. So we decided to go the more southern route through El Paso. The only concern with that is that I'll spool it up here for you. Is that when you make that run along the route in El Paso, that um, I'll show you here. So here's Carlsbad, New Mexico, and over here is El Paso, Texas. And so this run in between Carlsbad and El Paso is about 120, 123 statute miles or so run which is not terribly long, but there's no place in between these two to get fuel. Here's a little uh, private strip here, basically. There's no fuel available at that airport. So you're gonna have, when you leave out of Carlsbad, you've gotta make it all the way to El Paso. So on the day that um, day that we did this flight, we had popped in Carlsbad in, uh, ca at uh, Cavern City Airport, Carlsbad, and got fuel, topped off. The wind forecast for pretty much right off the nose of the aircraft, straight out of the uh, west-southwest at 30 knots. And, uh, you know, the gyro holds about three hours worth of fuel. And you make about 90, with two people on board, you make about 90 to 95 miles an hour across the ground uh, if there's no wind. Right? So you're like, well, then, you know, the range is pretty good. That doesn't seem too unreasonable. At 30 knot winds, uh, we should be able to make it with plenty of fuel. Didn't be a problem, all right? So we take off from Car Carlsbad, and I'll show you again. When you leave out of Carlsbad, you have to really, what you need to do is you have to run pretty much due west for a bit. There's a swag in the Guadalupe mountain range here, and um, you don't want to come down here to the south and cross over this much higher terrain. It's up around 9,000, eight to 9,000 feet. You run, run, run due west. As soon as you cross this ridge line, then you can drop down on the deck down to about 3,500, 4,000 feet get out of the wind and run uh, basically all the way across to here. When you get over to here, now you've got to start climbing again because you've got uh, rising terrain back up to about 6,500 or so. Well, about the time that we got, so we took off from there and things were looking good. Uh, across the Guadalupe, still encountering uh, winds that were pretty much what has been predicted. Uh, however, after we crossed the mountain range, dropped down on the deck, those 30 knot winds right off the nose suddenly became about 45 knot winds off the off the nose, sometimes 50 knot winds. And you know, we got a GPS on board and we're in some, some places we're making 38 miles an hour. And again, the winds would have been up about 60 miles an hour. We're making like 38 to 40 miles an hour across the ground, you know. Well, unfortunately, by the time we get about uh, two thirds of the way there, we've now used about three fourths of the fuel available we have to us, right? So that put us in this area right in through here, all right? Well, we're coming in, we've flown through here. When we got right about here, I decided, you know, we're not gonna make it, and we do not have enough fuel to get to El Paso, and there is no place to get fuel in between. 
I was aware that Highway 180 runs east-west here, so I went for Highway 180, thinking, well, we're going to land on the highway or someplace close to it where we've got some access to cars. Maybe we'll try to thumb a ride, get a gas can, and try to get back to here with some gas and then fly the aircraft out of there from there. Well, as luck would have it, we went right by a, um, a border patrol station, which is located right about there. And uh, so when I... Uh, saw the border patrol station I thought you know it's gonna be a lot more resources at that border patrol station than there is to land out in the middle of nowhere and uh, be sort of uh, at the uh, you know out of luck on trying to get a ride that can be a big problem so we waited uh, circled around over the top of the border patrol station several times there wasn't much uh, traffic on the highway and uh, so I waited till there were no cars on the highway on the section that uh, decided to land it and off to the side there was a gravel there's a little fire station an auxiliary fire station had a little gravel parking lot so we came made the approach down landed on the highway and then i taxied over into the gravel parking lot and uh, shut the aircraft down it was essentially directly across the road from the border patrol station so one of the border patrol agents <laughs> decided to come out and see what was going on and to say that he was pretty excited would be an understatement. <laughs> we were pretty happy he didn't just start firing and asking questions later. But, but uh, anyway, we did uh, did get it onto the ground safely over in a gravel parking lot, shut the thing down, and stopped the rotor. And uh, I'll show you some photos here. Okay, so the first photo I show there's shows the uh, gyro off to the side where I landed pulled off into the parking lot and the the uh, border patrol agent decided to come up behind me there in the truck and uh, so he got out pretty excited came over and was once he figured out that we I guess we weren't running drugs or running guns or doing anything else he calmed down quite quite a bit like I say there weren't any shots fired right off the bat and uh, you know I just told him I said hey we're gonna we're gonna run out of fuel we we're on our way from Carlsbad to El Paso and there was no way we we're gonna make it so it was either land safely here <laughs> or take our chances on there I mean it wouldn't have been a chance we were we were going to run out of fuel no questions about it so uh, I said you know so I landed here I picked the safe play over the not so safe play you don't want to you know when you know you're gonna end up losing the engine if at all possible to land under power at a place of your choosing <laughs> that's certainly the better way to go uh, so anyway, he agreed with that, and I said, "Well, but now I need gas." <laughs> so <laughs> they were kind enough; they actually have gas available to motorists that, if they run their car out of gas, they can give them a few gallons of gas to get them uh, into El Paso and get fuel. So I, I imagine this was the first time they ever had to supply gas to an aircraft uh, to be able to make it all the way into El Paso, but. They were kind enough uh, to give me uh, five gallons of fuel here. I'll show you another couple pictures there. Okay, so the next photo that I'm going to show you uh, shows the gyro again positioned directly across from the Border Patrol Station. And you'll notice there's two flags there, one American flag and I believe a flag of Texas that are on a flagpole. Uh, directly kind of over the nose of the aircraft you can see in there and those flags are sticking straight out I mean the winds were hawking pretty good 45 to 50 miles an hour or so by that time luckily it was lined up right down the right down the highway and made it easy to land and easy to take off from you'll also notice that there's more border, border patrol the agents that have showed up sort of interested in what the hell we're doing <laughs> Okay, so <clears throat> it's time to depart now, and uh, we've got our fuel on board, and these guys were kind enough to actually stop traffic for us so we could take off, and it was a very short ground run into a 69 wind. You only roll about three feet, and you're in the air. But uh, so I'm getting ready to fire up the aircraft to take off, and one of the Border Patrol agents comes over and goes, oh, hold on, hold on a minute. He goes, uh, would you boys care if we said a prayer for you? <laughs> I'm like, well, yeah, I guess he was a... Preacher of sorts, I'm like, well, I already beat you to it. I was, I was saying a whole bunch of prayers on the way, hoping I was going to make it here to get this thing on the ground safely and get some fuel. So, so anyway, we agreed, guys, and more than more than happy to let it, let you guys say a prayer for us. So anyway, so <laughs> we've got traffic stopped, and uh, 
he said what at the time seemed like a very, very lengthy <laughs> prayer, but to be more honest with you, I wouldn't have cared if he did a three hour sermon on the side of the road there. I was so glad they didn't shoot us when we landed. So, so anyway, so we had our prayer, we had, the, we had our blessing done and uh, we were able to uh, get the aircraft fired up and get on the way and made it successfully to El Paso. So. Okay, so what lessons did we learn <laughs> from this adventure? Well, the biggest lesson we learned is is you know expect the unexpected and if uh <clears throat> there's a program that hai has been touting since about uh 2012 or 2013 called land and live and basically what what it says is that if you find yourself and usually implying to weather conditions although in this situation this was weather conditions we had uh winds were much in excess of what was forecast but if you find that <clears throat> weather's closing in on you or it can be also applied to fuel starvation just as well then you know you need to get the aircraft on the ground and don't fly in inclement weather don't put yourself in a situation where you got complete fuel starvation don't wait till the thing quits and now you're forced to land wherever you can get to you know if it looks like you're not going to make your destination definitely definitely not going to make it to an airport particularly in a helicopter or a gyroplane and even an airplane you're much better off to find a safe place to get the aircraft and get it on the ground. Don't wait till you run out of fuel or you get yourself into weather that uh, you end up uh, uh, being a statistic with. So, so land and live.